Are there any scholarships for international students to pursue masters in the US? Hey everyone, my name is Kajal and welcome to a Q&A video. On this channel, I share tutorials and advice to help you study and pursue a career in robotics. As I go through the questions, I've included them and the timings in the description below. So without further ado, let's get into it. I just saw your YouTube page and it has really helped me with some of the questions I had. Well, thank you. I have some questions wondering if you could help answer them. I can't seem to locate my fees or bill. It just gives me cost for credit. Now in the US, you don't find the total tuition fee because in US, when you do your masters, you have the option to choose as many or as little course as you want. Now do keep in mind that when you're an international student studying in the US, you have to comply with certain immigration rules. And so you will most likely always be a full-time student. And the moment you complete the minimum required credits, then you have to graduate. Now notice how I said credit and not courses, because when it comes to the US, you are working in the credit system and not the course system. Now different courses will be of different credits. It could be one credit, two credit, three credit, four, or whatever system the university, the department, and the program you're attending is using. So when it comes to calculating fees, you have to first figure out how many credits you need to maintain a full-time status. Then look at the courses that you have to take as well as the elective options. Then calculate the credits and see how many you need to take to be a full-time status and any more that you're planning to take. Then multiply that with the per credit rate to get the actual fee that you'll be paying per semester. Some universities may also charge fees for using facilities. So keep an eye out for that. I've gone through an example for the UMB's robotics course and I will include it here. What you'll see here is the credit rate. That is the rate for each credit. You'll have to figure out how many credits you need for graduating and the number of credits for each course. At the University of Maryland, each course was about three credit and you needed 30 credits to graduate. That being said, that is 30 minimum to graduate. You can pursue more credits. However, since you are an international student, the moment you reach 30 credits, you have to graduate. Let's talk about full-time and part-time status. Full-time means that you're taking nine or more credits. Part-time being you're taking less than nine credits. As an international student, you're required to maintain full-time status except the last semester. So generally, people tend to take three courses for the first three semesters and one course for the last semester. That being said, you can graduate early by taking one extra course in one of the semesters. So now let's calculate. You'll be a full-time student for three semesters and part-time student for one semester. With the rates given on the page, you'll be paying about $34,340 in tuition fees. When I say tuition fee, this is the fee you will be paying for studying at University of Maryland. This does not include the cost of living, food and any other expenses that you may have. So keep that in mind as well. Our next question is, it seems to me that there are absolutely no scholarships for international students at UMB. There are only things close to that are graduate assistantship. I'll be going through the listing on the eJobs portal. Any suggestion concerning scholarship or assistantship? You're right. Even when I was studying, I could not find a single scholarship for international students. The majority of them required U.S. citizenship. And as you rightly pointed out, a very good alternative is assistantship. Because it helps you waive off your tuition fee, gives you health care and stipend, which is additional income that will help you cover your living expenses. Now, when it comes to UMD, there is a specific job site, as you mentioned, eJob, where you can find graduate assistantship listing. That is how I found the assistantship that I eventually secured during my master's. Now, the other tip that I have is reach out to seniors from the university. Because they may have done graduate assistantship, they can refer you to that department. Next, also reach out to professors. Now, this is not going to be easy. This is a bit of work, but it can pay off. Because if you work with professors, not only are you getting the assistantship benefit, that is tuition fee waivers and an income, you're also getting experience in your field. So this is what you need to focus on as well when you're reaching out to professors. Simply saying, hey, I'm looking for assistantship won't help a lot. Go through professors' website and see what research they are working on and see if those interests align and then talk specifically about those research topics. 
this will help you way more than simply sending hey i'm looking for a system share next do i have to go ahead and look for housing or there will be an email on that if i have to look for housing which facilities would you recommend you will most likely not get an email about housing you have to find your own accommodation when you come to the us for your masters now some universities like umb also have graduate housing that tends to be a little bit cheaper than other accommodation now when you're looking for housing some apartment complexes will give you a room whereas some will require you to take up the whole space and look for your own roommates even with your own space they may assign you roommates so make sure to check all of those details when i was coming to the us i joined a lot of facebook groups from the universities i was planning to attend from there i could find roommates as well as advice from seniors on which apartment complexes to go for today along with facebook groups i'll also recommend you check out slack telegram or discord channels to see if you can find groups for the university that you plan to attend plus reach out to your seniors through linkedin and see if they can give you some advice let's go to the next question what should be the deciding factor when selecting a university is it location or future job opportunities or courses/labs i would say start with your goal figure out do you want to go for phd after your masters or do you want to work in the industry because this will determine that are you looking for courses that have a lot more theoretical approach or that allows you to work in the lab with professors or are they more practical project driven so that it can help you land a job that being said working with professors in lab will also help you land jobs and this also ties into the location now if you're someone who's looking to work in the industry your goal is to also get a good internship and co-op now co-op is something you do while you're studying so the preference is something that is local to your university so this means that if your plan is to work for a job location plays a lot more important role than if your plan is to do research with research your ultimate goal is to work with a professor because for phd your advisor plays the most important role so i would say start looking at professors if you're planning to do phd and then from there decide which university you want to go for i got acceptance from germany and us congratulations what advice and suggestion would you give to select the best option when it comes to looking at the country my number one thing is look at immigration system how friendly is it if you want to settle into that country what are your options if you want to work what are the options available for example when you come to the us as an international student after you complete your masters you have to find a job within 60 or 90 days otherwise your visa validity expires further to work long term you first need h1b which is lottery based system or you could go for a green card but again depends on which country you're from if you're from a country like india getting into a general eb2 green card is very difficult yes there are options like eb1 green card but again this is a lot more than just one video i do have one video where i talk about the us immigration system that i'll link in the card above and in the description now when it comes to germany i don't have much information about it but i would urge you to go and find out from your seniors who have studied in germany what the immigration system is like and then use that as a factor when deciding between countries now the other things to consider are job opportunities are there enough jobs in your area of study to consider that country next what's the pay scale is it going to be a good pay scale for you to cover your living expenses pay off student loans if you took any and be able to accomplish any other dreams you may have my inclination is toward us but the only thing that's setting me back is the tuition fee what do you advise when it comes to tuition fee i would say look at public universities they do tend to be a little bit cheaper than private universities next you can look into assistantships because it can help you waive off your tuition fee plus get a stipend that will help you cover your living expenses lastly you can also do part time jobs now as an international student for the first 9 months you have to do a part time job within campus but after that during your summer internship and your second year you can do a co op with another company where you can make good enough money to cover your tuition fees once again it also depends on which university you are going for the tuition fee and the location because at the least you will get the minimum per hour rate that is set by the state Now I know that was a lot of information in a very quick video but I do hope that you found it helpful. If you have more questions use the comment section below or reach out to me on my social media at Instagram or LinkedIn. And before you go if you haven't already don't forget to subscribe and like this video.
Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.